Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure and privilege to initiate today's hybrid CME on elimination of parent to child transmission of HIV and syphilis, organized by Institute of Ops and Dainis or Gangaram Hospital under the aegis of Isopop Delhi chapter. This is the brainchild of Dr. Chandra Mansukhani, who is the president of Isopop Delhi chapter. I will request her to give welcome address. May I have Dr. Chandra's CV, please? Dr. Chandra is the uh, president of Delhi chapter, and she is a senior consultant, Institute of Ops and Gynes at Gangaram Hospital. She is very academically oriented and believes in teaching lots of students, very hardworking clinician, and with lots of academic associations. Over to you, Dr. Chandra, for your welcome address. Thank you, Dr. Mala, for your kind words. Good morning, everyone. It is my proud privilege and honor to welcome you today in this CME on elimination of parent to child transmission of HIV and syphilis under the aegis of ISOPAP Delhi chapter. First of all, I want to welcome our chief guest, President ISOPAP, Dr. Gangadhar Sahu, who always encourages to organize various academic activities. I am very delighted to welcome Dr. Gujral, Chairperson, Institute of Obstetric and Gynae, Sir Gangaram Hospital. Ma'am has been a guiding force in organizing all academic endeavors. I take an opportunity to welcome our star speakers, moderators, panelists, and chairpersons who are going to enlighten us with their wisdom and vast experience in their field. I also welcome our esteemed chairpersons who will add their valuable inputs to their sessions. I also welcome all the delegates, PG students who have come and logged in for this CME. I'm sure each and everyone will be benefited from today's CME. I welcome each and everyone once again. Thank you. Now it's uh, over to again to Dr. Mala. <coughs> Thanks Dr. Chandra for your welcome address. Now it is my privilege to invite our chairperson and head of department, Institute of Ops and Gynae, Sir Gangaram Hospital, Madam Dr. Kaval Gujral. Madam has been our uh, guiding force for all the academic activities. She's in charge of the Harris Pregnancy Clinic, past president of NARCHI, past vice president of NARCHI all over India. And she's the joint secretary of Indian Menopause Society, past national. Uh, Madam is very academically oriented mm -hmm. and she always guides us in all the academic activities. At present, ma'am is the president of Fetal Medicine Unit of Delhi. Over to you, Madam, for Thank your you. encouraging words. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Mala. Uh, as I always say, Mala is very kind with the words. Now, I've been asked to give some uh, small overview of HIV. You have a lot of stalwarts speaking on it. But first of all, I must begin by congratulating Chandra, Mala, and the whole ISOPAP team for just doing these CMAs time and again. You know, this is a hybrid CME. And to select two topics which have been neglected, especially during the COVID times, the HIV and the syphilis. We have forgotten syphilis. Now, what is the burden of HIV? Uh, the quoted prevalence is something like 0. 0.7 to 1.2%, more in the eastern part of India than the other parts, lesser in the northern parts. And with the 30 million annual deliveries in India, the burden of the disease is something like 20,000 uh, you know, mothers infected with HIV delivering, and around 10,000 babies, if no treatment is given, are going to be carrying the disease with them. If you look at under 15 years, it has got 1.45 or 1.5 lakh children suffering from HIV. And where do these children get the infection? Mostly from the mother to child transmission, majority happening during the labor, 75%, 25% happening uh, during the adult period. So as clinicians, obstetricians and physicians, any branch you may fall into, I think we are responsible you know, to eliminate this disease. We've come a long way from 2010, the 
and mother to child transmission has reduced to something like 25, 26%. But the goal, as Chandra always tells me, to make it less than 5%. And that's a large goal to achieve. NACO and other bodies, we have some very stalwarts coming from these bodies, have done a lot. And at this point of time, if I'm not mistaken, 21,000 centers exist in India for counseling, testing, uh, and giving treatment and follow up. And that's a small, uh, that's a good feat, you know, to achieve. Now, coming to the other issue, syphilis. You know, when we were medical students and even postgraduate students, we used to get a long question on syphilis and pregnancy, uh, you know, effects on the baby and the mother. And some of the textbooks have also deleted and made it, not deleted exactly, made the chapter very small because we feel syphilis does not exist. So when she asked me to give introductory remarks, I said, let me look at the incidence of syphilis. 0.3% is a 3.8% is the zero prevalence rate, which is not less. And annually, around about, uh, uh, you know, 16,000 babies are infect, born infected with syphilis. Just imagine that. And that's a large thing to achieve. And this is one disease which leads to antenatal problems. You know, preterm birth, 24, 20% increase, uh, intrauterine death, 5% increase, neonatal death, 9% increase. And if the ba baby escapes this all, it's going to be landed with a long-term follow-up in terms of deafness, muscle disease, bone disease, and so many other sequelae of congenital syphilis. And this is one disease which can be prevented. So it's mandatory for us to universally screen every pregnant woman for HIV and syphilis and, you know, give the appropriate treatment involving the physicians and the specialists in the area. Uh, that is all I have to say. You, the program is very beautifully outlined, some dedicated lectures on prevalence management and very nice, exciting panel discussions. So I won't stand between the audience and the academic piece. With that, thank you very much for letting me be a part of this symposium. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Madam, for your encouraging words. Now it's my privilege to invite the chief guest for today's CME, Dr. Gangadhar Sahu, for words of wisdom. Sir is retired professor and HOD from Medical College of Burla. He's ex-dean IMS and some hospital Bhuvaneshwar, ex-pro vice chancellor SOA, University Bhuvaneshwar, president Isopark, disciplined learner, a passionate student, sprightly friendly teacher of, teacher of human values, a writer, philosopher, administrator, and he's always surrounded by extraordinary friends and well-wishers. His principle of life is never be a defaulter. Mission and vision to be a ladder of success for others to climb up. Sir always likes to give motivational uh, scripts in the morning to all the Isopub members. And we are happy that to have Dr. Gangadhar Sahu today morning for words of wisdom for all of us. Over to you, sir, for your words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mala Madam, Chandra Madam, and Kanwal Madam for a beautiful arranging this beautiful hybrid seminar on the two. <laughs> One is HIV, coined with the most likely forgotten syphilis. So my greetings from Aishopar, blessings from Lord Jagannath and my Samaleshwari. All the best for the organizers, Sar Gangaram Hospital, arranging this beautiful hybrid seminar on the infectious diseases, two infectious diseases, particularly one is the ongoing catastrophic sequelae and complications of which we are facing on day to day. And one almost we have forgotten from our memory and to see that it is again that is being prevalent, that is syphilis. Therefore, thanks for this brain work. It is being the brain child as I came to know of Chandra Madam. 
So thank you for coining these two. One is relatively new and another is relatively old one. So the subject, theme of the subject and about the subject is well, very briefly spoken by Kanwal Madam. So I learned that there are brilliant speakers, panelists, moderators, and also the experts who will give the details of these two decisions. <clears throat> so at last, we definitely will go home with a take home message and how we can eliminate the parent to child transmission. In a country like India, where 140 crores of people live, it is very difficult to eliminate something. Even we cannot eliminate a terrorist. So how to eliminate this virus or the bacteria that is being transmitted from the parents to the child? So thing is, unless we change the lifestyle of the society, the change in the lifestyle of the nation, then it will be very difficult to eliminate this. Of course, as we are the persons of the medical fraternity and that two of the most prestigious profession called obstetrics because two lives, more than two lives at our disposal. So we must try our best, try hard to eliminate, to educate the people, to eliminate this infection from parents to the child. Hope, Lord Jagannath, will definitely bless the obstetricians to achieve their goal. Hope Isoparb will play a greater role in the society to educate the women and also the family members so that they will help in eliminating this. So with this, once again, I thank the organizers for inviting me to be the chief guest of this morning. So thank you very much. Long live I super. Long live I super. Long live I super. Please give five minutes for me. To, I mean, of yours towards I super to me, so that we can change the face of I super. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, sir, for your all encouraging words. Now we hand over the floor to our master of ceremony, Dr. Riddhi. Naran to carry on the scientific program. Dr. Nidhi Naran is a young, enthusiastic endoscopic surgeon of Institute of Ops and Gyni, Sir Gangaram Hospital. Over to you, Dr. Nidhi, to carry on the scientific program. Thank you, Mom. Okay. So now we uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so we'll be starting our sessions from session one, that is burden of HIV and national goals uh, from 9.30 a.m. onwards. Thank you. 
सिंगल कर दीजिए सिंगल फिंगर सिंगल हाँ सिंगल सिंगल इससे आगे हाँ जी मैम संजीव संजीव ठीक है Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, I welcome all of you. Uh, we'll be starting with our first session, that is burden on HIV of HIV and national goals. Uh, I I would take the privilege to invite our experts uh, for the first session. I would like to invite Dr. Um, Richa Devan, ma'am. Ma'am is former director, professor, and head of department of medicine at Maulana Azad Medical College, New Delhi. She is head of ART center established by NACO, NACO at Lok Nayak Hospital since 2004. And ma'am is associated with HIV care and training of medical and paramedical officers since 2004 under NACO and WHO. We welcome you, ma'am. Now, I take the privilege to invite our next expert, uh, Dr. Harsha Kular, ma'am. Ma'am is senior consultant, Department of Obstetric and Gynecology at Sir Gangaram Hospital. Ma'am is president, Delhi Gynecological Forum, Central 2022 to 24. Ma'am is also has been past president, ISOPAP Delhi branch. Welcome you, ma'am. Now we request our experts to invite the speaker uh, for the upcoming session. Good morning, everyone. Our first speaker is Ms. Priyamrita Mohanty. Uh, she is postgraduate in sociology, regional development, and state director of Delhi Haryana Rajasthan Development Saki organization for the last one and a half years. And she has been associated with me with modeling projects. Uh, she is part of very important three projects in the public private partnership, uh, and she'll talk about it, uh, which is uh, part of elimination of mother to child transmission of HIV as well as syphilis in India. So, let me invite Dr. Uh, Ms. Priyamrita Mohanty to start with her talk. And before she starts, I want to say a few words. Uh, when India became signatory to UNA's uh, goals of elimination of mother to child transmission uh, of HIV as syphilis. It was envisioned that we will eliminate it by 2020, and we have really fallen short of those goals. And I must say that as long as we have got HIV still prevalent amongst adults. We are never going to achieve that elimination that we are envisaging. So, multi pronged attack is required to take care of elimination of mother to child transmission of HIV and syphilis. I invite now Madam Priyambada to start with her talk. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Richard Evan. Uh, I would like to present, I'm presenting my organization, MSRP, uh, who is a national uh, partner for the NACO, actually. We are uh, exactly a technical partner working with various uh, state control societies for the PPTCT program and other programs of Global Fund also. Yeah. So as a SAPI, uh, it was registered in 2002, formally in Chennai. We work exactly with both the national and the government agencies and with the private sectors also. Our headquarters is actually in Chennai and we are operating in 37 states of India with different programs. Our ultimate beneficiaries are people living with HIV, AIDS, and the pregnant women, the children, and the sexual minority groups. 
uh, with this, we are running different programs in 37 states of India. So our presence is all over in Pan India. So uh, when I talk about Project Vexna, uh, which is uh, elimination of mother to child transmission of HIV and AIDS, it's a, a program run by SAPI with the support of National AIDS Control Organization to scale up the saturation of the PPTCD services among both the public and the private sector to achieve the elimination goals. Uh, this project is actually funded by GFATM and uh, SAPI is one of the principal recipients and uh, we are covering 428 districts across 24 states and Indian territories and Delhi is one of the states. There is another partner known as Plan India who is scattered to the other states of India for both the for this uh, elimination of mother to child transmission of HIV. And uh, the program aims to facilitate the HIV screening among pregnant women and the spouses and increase the proportion of HIV positive pregnant linking to the ART. We are also looking into the proportion of HIV exposed infants uh, so that uh, to facilitate to increase the baby testing within the first two months of the birth. Also to increase the reporting of HIV and syphilis testing from public and private sectors, FICD, because both pub, we are working for both public and private. So we are also facilitating the correct reporting in the portal. So uh, the goal and target of NSCB4, uh, it was like 2030, we have to end the epidemic of AIDS, that is the SDG goal. And by 2020, we should have eliminated the mother to child transmission of HIV. But we are a shortfall with this, we couldn't achieve. So uh, actually because of this, we couldn't achieve in India because India being a large uh, you know, country, uh, it's very difficult to achieve at that period of time. But like 14 other countries were validated for EMTCT for both HIV and syphilis. And they are uh, like before 2020, they could achieve. So you can just see there are these 14 countries who have achieved either HIV and also both HIV and syphilis. Now the NACO has a national AIDS control program, the NACP5 uh, for 2021 to 2026. So the goal is to reduce the annual HIV infections by 80%. Second goal is to reduce the AIDS related mortalities by 80%. The third is eliminate the vertical transmission of HIV and syphilis where we are working right now for this right now. So that by NSCP5, by the end of 2026, we should eliminate uh, the pediatric uh, HIV. Then the fourth goal is to promote uh, universal access to quality of ST and RTI services. The fifth one is to eliminate HIV AIDS related stigma and discrimination because uh, we also still find that there is still stigma and discrimination towards the AIDS, uh, HIV related people. Uh, so the next slide is that uh, the objective of NSB5, uh, so it is divided into two parts. One is HIV, AIDS prevention and control. The other part is the SKRT prevention and control. Under HIV and AIDS prevention and control, we have 95% of people who are at most at risk of acquiring HIV infection and comprehensive prevention. That should be 95% of HIV positive people who should know their status and out of that 95% should also be on treatment and then the 95% should also be having a viral suppression. 
The third one is 95% of pregnant women and the breastfeeding uh, women living with HIV should have a suppression of viral load towards attainment of elimination of vertical transmission of HIV where we are working right now for this. And the last one is the less than 10% of people living with HIV and key population experience stigma and discrimination. Under the STI and RTA prevention control, universal access to quality STI and RTA services to at risk and vulnerable populations and the attainment of elimination of vertical transmission HIV. India is moving forward with both HIV and syphilis uh, uh, elimination together. So this is the goal of NACV5. Uh, so the first goal is to augment the comprehensive synergy with NHA for testing of pregnant women for both HIV and syphilis. Because until unless there is an NHA ownership of the program, uh, then we cannot uh, achieve uh, the both HIV and syphilis elimination over here. But nowadays, in, uh, NHM has already started uh, providing dual kits actually for both the HIV and syphilis uh, testing at the peripheral level. And here we can see there is engagement of private sector. If also private sector can also get in collaboration with NHM and report to them because we have seen the data that there are a lot of uh, you know loopholes with the private sector reporting to NHM also with the HMA system. Then the second part is to uh, strengthen the retention and ART address along eligible uh, women living with HIV and prioritize the family planning also. Because uh, somewhere we are also finding that the family planning services to the pregnant woman, the positive pregnant woman is lacking because of stigma and discrimination. Uh, you know, the permanent method is not being used somewhere. So here also private sector can also support in doing a positive pregnant woman family planning support system over here. And there are HIV physicians also who give private medicines also. So they should also think that those women who take private medicines from them, they should return to the cascade. The third is introduce and scale up dual HIV kits of both HIV and syphilis to prospect the dual elimination. Here already dual, for the dual elimination, already the kits are being designed for both HIV and uh, syphilis. The cost is also very less if you see in terms of a single kit for both HIV and syphilis. Here also private sector can move forward with also purchase of the dual kits for both uh, HIV and syphilis. Then the fourth one uh, is strengthen the early diagnosis of infants and all children living with HIV. This is about the AIT center and the ICDC part where they can also diagnose the post uh, babies, you know, uh, because there are, we have found that there are many babies who come even after like two years, three years, they are getting detected with HIV. So this uh, is something we need to also work about. And the fifth one is to prepare a strategic road plan to guide actions towards attainment of the validation of elimination of vertical transmission. Here also there is a, you know, like support of uh, private sector is required because when the WHO is going to validate India for both the public and private sector, uh, so they will check the also the reports of the ANC, how many ANCs have catered to the private sector and public sector and what percentage of testing has happened, whether it is a dual kind of repeated test or, uh, or single test for them. So they are going to look into that part. The last one is to strengthen the strategic information in the context of HA positive pregnant woman and the mother. So here also like uh, we need to have the private sector also should know also that what are the new guidelines are coming, what are the strategies being designed by the NACO at least, so that we go both the public and private go in hand in hand to move forward the elimination. This is the WHO process indicators and the impact indicators for EMTCity of HIV. The process uh, targets are at least one visit, the antenatal women should have at least one visit so that it should be at least more than 95 percentage and more than 95 percentage, the coverage of HIV testing should happen. And then third one is ART coverage for all the identified HIV positive pregnant women should be more than 95 percentage. So the registration should be 95 out of registration 95, that should be 95 percentage of testing out of 95 percent of their testing, that should be ART linkage also. The impact targets is about the case rate of new pediatric HIV infections due to empty city, uh, less than 50 per 1 lakh live births, 
and then the mtct uh, rate either it should be less than 5% in breastfeeding populations and less than 2% in the non breastfeeding populations so these are the two uh, process indicators and impact uh, targets for which the wh is going to validate india the current status on the emtct national scenario 2021 2022 if you see uh, we have the process indicators and the impact indicators extremely sorry because there is some technical uh, problem uh, for not showing in the zoom now which i think it's showing right now thank you for the patience we give you 5 minutes extra to complete your session okay sorry for the interruption so uh, the current status of the national emtct program if you see the process indicators we have 75 percentage of the anc coverage and out of that we have 92 percentage of the testing against the target 95 percentage which is for uh, 20 25 to 2026 the estimated uh, target and then we have the linkage to the art is 98 percentage and then we have 21 uh, uh, children uh, the case of new pediatric hiv infections due to mtct and the last one is till now it is not less than 5% also we a national scenario shows 27.4 percentage of the mtct rate so we are uh, nowhere in the elimination part then so this is uh, the target said uh, already have uh, you know said about the current status but if you see uh, the 2022 23 we have 88 percentage then it's continuing to 93 percentage then uh, greater than or equal to 95 percentage for both 2024 to and then 2026 so these are the target set for us to achieve the elimination uh, part over here so as uh, same wise we have to also achieve like uh, till now more than 95% we have to achieve with the art part and then we have to further maintain the reduction of the new infections among the babies over here and then the mtct rate we have to come below 95 percentage because now currently we are with 27.4 percentage this is the delhi scenario delhi scenario if we say we have estimated positive pregnant women is 490 out of that if you say the estimations both public and private for 2021 2022 is 361110 out of that we have only achieved 66% both testing in both public and private and we could identify 228 private sector for this we have only 115350 because we have taken the estimation as 30% globally as at least because national scenario the country takes 30% for private sector for the uh, you know estimation of anc coverage so out of that we could cover only 57% of the uh, screening among the pregnant women in delhi and six only we could identified in the private sector positive pregnant women this is about april 2022 Uh, this july 2022 data actually there is a wrong over here this is april 2022 july 2022 this five months data 
so we are about to only achieve 81 percentage in public and private sector for both anc hiv testing and then 87 positive pregnant women were identified in private sector we could achieve only 50 percent within this five months and only one is identified from the private sector this is uh, the contribution from the private sector if you say we could map in delhi 496 uh, Actually, we have in a map, but out of that, we could uh, only enroll 468 private facilities in Delhi. Out of that, only 340 are uh, you know reporting in time. So it is like 73 percentage of reporting in time to us. Uh, this is the uh, if you see this is uh, district wise estimation. So we have put over here, and the coverage is 57 percentage and six identified and six are put on ART also. So uh, this is for the five months data, April 2022 to July 2022. If you see uh, the same, we could increase the mapping over here 518 before it was 480 or something. And now the enrollment has increased also. And uh, then the reporting is 16 percentage. Whereas a uh, previous slide, if you see for the one year, we had 73 percentage. But in this five months, we could see a decline again in the reporting. And uh, similarly, this is the district-wise pattern of reporting. Uh, and the testing numbers. These are the type of facilities we have enrolled the clinics, general hospitals is total coming for the last one year. And this is a private sector reporting status. If you see out of uh, this total 484, uh, 350 have actually reported in sites, but we have 134 non reporting sites since Delhi till now. And out of that, out of 350 also, we are getting only 144 as zero reporting. So there are maximum private hospitals in Delhi who are doing maternal services, but they do not want to report. They just uh, report zero in the national portal to us. So this is the main uh, problem in the reporting status. But whereas we had a simplified reporting uh, system in for the private sector, this is known as HI Pulse, which is owned by NACO actually. So this is a kind of uh, model what we are uh, looking into that every month, the private sector should report either through the WhatsApp system, uh, sorry, not in the WhatsApp, by a wave, SMA, wave system or a SMS or it is a mobile app system. So we have three ways of reporting over here. Just they have to punch the numbers, not the name of the client, anything, just the number. So uh, these are the challenges we have found when we go to the field and private sector, because in metro cities in Delhi, saturation of private sector is a big uh, problem for us because there are a lot of, you know, like we uh, go and visit them. We have to motivate them still, then some get enrolled, then some doesn't get enrolled, some get enrolled and then doesn't report also. Then the guidelines, whatever the NACO format is, we, we are asking only one page a simple format. Uh, we are not asking a line list to the private sector, just the number to be uh, punched into the HI Pulse uh, software and also a one page to be maintained. But that also they don't maintain, they have their own setup. Then we have to go and calculate the whole lab registers, calculate and provide them technical support to get the correct report over there. And there are frequent, uh, you know, staff turnover uh, with the private sectors also, the lab technicians, the staff nurses uh, who are in charge of the reporting, they get changed. So that is one difficulty. Then also there is a fear of sharing uh, data to the government sector also. Then there are multiple reporting uh, systems from the private sector to the government for HMS, they have to report for TV and municipal corporations. There are different departments they have to report, but HIV is also a part of that. They can also report HIV. So this is what we would request the private sector to report also on HIV. This is the support required from the private medical uh, associations. This is the last slide. Uh, we would request them to enroll into the SETNA program, a support letter to all the clinicians. And we would uh, request that uh, thanks to Dr. Chandra, uh, Chandra who gave us uh, this time to present in the CME and also sharing the HIV screening data on monthly basis of good record maintenance, uh, you know, like uh, referral and linkages of the reactive cases and to also come forward to support the national health. And we have said a uh, private sector can be champion side. This is a uh, thing I end my uh, session over here. Thank you, everyone. Very important to have the 